Thank you very much. <laughs> You'd think after locking eyes with my hero and national treasure, John Bradshaw Layfield, I'd be in a very good mood, but the fact of the matter is I'm stood here at 4.16 a.m. in the morning because for some reason I need to provide this jerk-off material for you, A to the F to the A to the P, while the rest of the party here at whatculture.com enjoys a full night kip ahead of our long day of travel back to the UK tomorrow, for which I'm going to be absolutely f***ed. Muggins one here, Muggins two, Chris behind the camera, he's going to be f***ed as well. What the f*** are we doing? A great night spent with Frank the Clown and Noel Foley has been ruined by this shit house having to be done here and now for some f***ing reason. Anyway, here all the devil you f*** off. It's just a clown! <laughs> And because it's now 4.18am, that's the only f***ing loud one you're going to get. Just imagine if we were doing this tomorrow, after we'd packed our suitcases and left our apartment at 10am, I'd be able to shout until the cows came home, because everybody would be up and it would be a lovely day. A lovely sunny day here in Orlando, but the fact of the matter is, it's quite cold. It's 4.18 in the mo- 4.19 in the morning. <laughs> Anyway, damn JBL, back at it again with the booing for the people we normally cheer and the cheering for the people that we normally boo. That bullshit excuse didn't work for Roman Reigns 12 months ago after his WWE World Heavyweight Championship win at WrestleMania 32. It didn't work for Corey Graves last night on WWE Raw and it certainly didn't f***ing work for you. Bring it up once again on this week's WWE Smackdown Live, you shit house c***s. F***ing house of horrors, match pals. What the f*** is that? I mean, if this was like 10.30am in the morning and I've got a full like 8 hours kip after arriving home from WWE Smackdown Live last night, I'd be able to think of some material. But since it's now 4.21 in the morning, I kind of f***ing be arsed. F***ing <laughs> Eric Rowan came back, didn't he? Or oh, who the f*** really cares? He's sh**, isn't he? He's just sh**, Eric Rowan. Anyway, he was wearing a funny mask, wasn't it? It was like a steampunk sheep mask. Sheep bear punk. Oh my god, that's the end of this series. Goodbye! And I forgot to mention just there, Eric Rowan getting a pup. When will that ever happen again? I'd be able to tell you, but it's now 4.22am in the morning. And I can't be asked to come up with any material. And anyway, let's deal with David Otunga in this one fell swoop of a point about Eric Rowan because he was acting all surprised. Oh, who could it be? Who could it be under the mask he's going? Well, there's a massive big f***ing ginger beard sticking out the bottom of it. Who else in WWE has a massive f***ing ginger beard, Dave, you you f***ing Next, we move on to Tom Phillips, who, no, he wasn't making jokes about putting his willy in the face of women. He claimed that WWE had five sellouts in a row in Orlando, and I'm just here like a sassy ghetto. I was at WWE NXT TakeOver Orlando on Saturday night, and I was on the side where the hard cam was when I looked over to the other side of the arena in the Armadillo Marina, as I think I called it yesterday, but I can't quite remember. I saw a load of box seats, not box seats, seats in a box. They were completely empty. That event wasn't sold out. Then we head to Tuesday's WWE Smackdown Live. I'm plonked behind the commentators. I look to me left, the little area underneath the hard cam, sparse, no f***er there. Far from a sellout WWE, he will not pull the wool over my eyes. In terms of population, I always think there was more bastards behind the announce table than there were sat underneath the hard cam. 
Anyway, speaking of people underneath the hard cam, I spotted Paul and Patricia Levesque, Triple H's mom and dad. Noel Foley was shocked that I knew who they were. I'm a f***ing weirdo. I know who Triple H's parents are. I'm a f***ing weirdo. It's John o'clock, everybody. Next we have John, the big old shit house who smelled like ranch dressing and sadness when I waltzed up behind him and sniffed his comb back thing. <sighs> John claimed that Alexa Bliss vs Naomi was a Wrestlemania rematch. Where was Alexa Bliss vs Naomi on the Wrestlemania card? The Wrestlemania rematch involving that WWE Smackdown Live Women's Championship would have been a six way taking place on Smackdown like it did at Wrestlemania two bastard days before. John o'clock, everybody. Back with John again, he came out with this shit house of a line. Can Naomi do it two nights in a row? Oh yes, John, because everybody saw her appear on WWE Raw last night, didn't they? No, they fucking didn't. Go and have a bath in your ranch dressing, you dirty bastard. Oh, equally, go and have a swift wank in your bath of ranch dressing over some big, sweaty, muscular lady, you dirty bastard. One what culture sign that said I'm a loyal subject? Great. Ross. Ty Dillinger appeared. But wait there. About Ty Dillinger. David Otunga made the most outlandish claim I've ever heard on a television ever. Ever, ever. Ever, ever. David Otunga claimed that he trained Ty Dillinger when he was in WWE developmental way back in the f***ing day. I'm going to ask you one question, Dave. How the f*** can that be so? Because Ty's really good. He has charisma coming out of his man sh bun. C bun. C chop bun. Ooh. Chops in a bun. Ty is one of the most over people in WWE, whereas Dave is one of the least over people in the history of WWE. So far under, he's under the business school that's next to the mountain that needs to fuck off to and leave us all alone. And these shit commentary bollocks are it's fucking what? 4.30 in the morning now, ha? Huh? Huh? I hope Jack the Job is enjoying his sleep. What's that coming over the hill? Is it a sick guy? Is it a sick guy? What's that coming over the hill? Is it a sick guy? Is it a sick guy? What's that coming over the hill? Is it a sick guy? Is it a sick guy? What's that coming over the hill? I made it on TV. Isn't that fucking great? And there's Chris's belly, tit, chest. It's there. It's got a John O'Clock thing on. He was there too. And he stood there here now. 4.35 in the morning. Oh, Christ. <laughs> I f***ing walked into that. <laughs> this. The debut of Shinsky Nats. 
wasn't it really weirdly done? The Miz and Maurice, who seemingly didn't know that their rivalry with John Cena and Mies, me, 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 me. Maurice ended at WrestleMania 33. They came out dressed as those two f tarts and cut a promo, taking the piss out of them. Then when they leave the ring, Shinsky Nak's music starts with a little violinist playing him in, and then there he comes down doing his old Two completely unrelated things, unless of course this was a little little thing we can read between the lines here because of course I'm a hack. Miz saying that John Cena was going away for a while, that could be proved to be true. But in bringing out Shinsuke Nak straight away, this was WWE's way of saying, don't worry pals, one massive star is going, one slightly smaller star is coming to take his place. That's what I inferred from that debut, just because of the fact he came out and said, f*** all. What sort of a debut is that? Thanks for turning up, Shinsky Nux, but you know, give us something. Give us something. No, it's not f***ing... <laughs> but of course, you marks, you marks there who can't move from your sofas because you are too f***ing big to do so. Ha <laughs> ha, sucks to be you. Ha ha ha. Shinsky Nux did take part in the dark match. He came out and did his entrance. And then, while Smack Diddly Down was on commercial, Ziggler came out and said, Who the f*** are you, pal? Let's have a little grapple. Shinsuke Nak said, You're on. They did so after 205 Live, you see. To make the arena seem vaguely full for 205 Live, WWE put on a match after 205 Live so the marks in the arena stay to watch that match all the way through 205 Live. Secrets of the business revealed, Shinsky Nax beat Dolph Ziggler just so people would stay and watch 205 Live. And what a shit episode of 205 Live it was. What the f was Neville celebration about? It was f all. F all. F all like my life. And how about that? Wouldn't you believe it? Shinsky Nax Twitter handle on his official WWE main roster debut is incorrect. It belongs to a little Asian fella called Shinsuke Nato, a man who joined Twitter in 2009 and a man who has 30 odd followers. I think it was 37 when I looked. To be honest, I don't give a f in the f Shinsuke Nato. Of course, Shinsuke Nakamura, his name is spelled S-H-I and they put S-H-U-N, you silly, silly f Here I am. It's quarter to five in the morning, moaning about the wrong Twitter handle being put on a wrestling show. F*** it, let's have a little scroll down Shinsuke Nak's tweets. Let's have a little look what the real Shinsuke Nakamura likes to do. Shinsuke Nato teaches middle schoolers English in Japan. It's way difficult to teach in the Japanese way. <laughs> Which I want to have it changed. I let them report their text each other. It can be done in pairs, groups, and the whole of the class. They are supposed. For a man who teaches English, he is clearly not very good at it. It's John o'clock, everybody. Here's a direct quote from John at 10 to 5 in the morning. Dean Ambrose title reign made birds fly into each other. At this stage in my life, I wish I was a bird. A bird that could fly so high it could match the altitude of aeroplanes. You know, big Boeing fuck 747s. Then, purposefully, I would fly into one of their jet engines and end it all. It'd be fucking great. And we round things off from this really depressing episode of WTF Moments for the smack diddly down after WrestleMania territory tree with a bit of a tonga time where Dave claimed that nobody can help but follow Bray Wyatt. Oh, what a silly thing to say. As we all know, Bray is the worst cult leader in the history of cult leaders. In over four years on the main roster, he's only managed to gain one full-time follower in Braun Strowman after debuting with Luke and Eric. I know D. Bryan was in there for a while, but he f***ed off, didn't he? Randy was in there for a bit, but he f***ed off as well. Braun f off, but there was nothing Bray could do about that because it was the brand extension. He's the worst cult leader of all time. What the f is Dave Otunga saying? That people can't help but follow him. No f ever does. And with that, that is all of the W. Dapapum. John! 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 
Hi again, wrestling fans. Matt Stryker here, and I'm excited to finally announce the brackets for the Pro Wrestling World Cup 2017 from the Mexican qualifiers. Penta El Zero M versus Phoenix. El Ligero versus Drago. Rey Mysterio versus Alberto El Patron. Juventud Guerrera versus El Hijo de Dos Caras. Tickets to see the explosive action live April the 30th at the Coventry Sky Dome in England are available exclusively at ProWrestlingWorldCup.com.